Hi guys, in this video I am going to show you what is a small signal model of a MOSFET. We will derive it and figure out what is this circuit model of a MOSFET is equivalent to in terms of small signal model. So to start with, let's say the drain current that is flowing into the drain is a function of the voltage that is applied between gate to source, gate to source, let me put this here. VGS and it's a function of VDS which is the potential between drain to source. Now in order to find small signal model let's say if we actually change VGS by a delta VGS and VDS by a delta VDS there would be a change in ID let's say that is delta ID. So let me write that in which case, if we assume that delta VGS and delta VDS are small, that's the point of talking about small signal model. If you assume these two are small, then the resultant delta ID is also assumed to be small. So in that case, we can expand this function by using Taylor series expansion only till first order. Because as these values are small, this function can be represented with just the first derivatives itself no need of second and higher order derivatives. We'll go into details of that after completing the MOSFET uh, small signal model and in fact in general the philosophy of small signal model. So if we expand that we can write ID plus delta ID is equal to F of VGS VDS plus partial differentiation of ID with respect to VGS times delta VGS plus partial differentiation of ID with respect to VDS times delta VDS. Now the key here is the assumptions that we made delta VGS is small. We are taking it to be small VGS and similarly delta VDS we are taking it as small VDS and similarly delta ID as small ID. Now if we rewrite this expression it would be this value in which we can say that f of vgs vds is nothing but the capital id hence we're going to say this value and this value are in fact equal in that case we can say this value that is small id is equal to this value so now our interest is only pertaining to the small id value which is because of a small change in VGS and VDS which is resultant that is ID. Now let me write only this expression. In fact a very important point to note here is this value is for a given VDS and this value for a given VGS. We are going to define two terms. One is this partial differentiation at a given VDS we're going to call this GM, the transconductance, and this term, which is GD, this is drain conductance. In fact, in most of the cases, we write GD is equal to 1 over RD, where RD is the drain resistance. This entire equation can be written equal to this equation. Now, the drain current that is flowing can be equated to this value with respect to the input voltage VGS, in fact input small signal voltage VGS and the drain to source small signal voltage VDS. Now let's represent this in circuit diagram which would be let's say we take this as a drain terminal and the current that is flowing into drain is ID which is what we have derived here. This should be equal to one is GM times VGS, so it depends on voltage between gate to source. Hence, we have to take the gate terminal. I'm taking gate terminal here and source terminal here. And of course, what happens to gate to source terminal side is there is an open circuit here. Because of the oxide, there wouldn't be current flowing through gate. Hence, this is always open. I'm taking this open and calling this VGS. If you know the voltage applied across the gate to source is VGS, that is the small signal gate to source voltage, then the current that is flowing 
can be represented as a voltage dependent current source because this is the first term we are representing here that is voltage dependent current source and that current flows from drain to source value is gm times vgs and id is equal to gm times vgs plus there is second term which depends on the voltage across the drain to source so this is source terminal this entire thing is source terminal which is common so the potential between drain to source is vds now if you take this drain resistance in parallel to this so that the entire id is divided into two segments one is gm times vgs and the second one is the current resulting because of the voltage drop across the drain resistance that is rd so the current that flows through this rd is nothing but vds over rd that's what is written here this is the second term this is a low frequency small signal model of a mosfet now as we know the drain current equation which is given by mu c ox prime w by l times vgs minus vth whole square by 2 times 1 plus lambda vds we have taken this equation in saturation because we use the mosfet especially in saturation region for analog applications where we need the small signal model of course we have to make a point to verify that we are operating in the saturation region when we are doing the analysis that is vds is greater than vgs minus vth now we can find the value of gm from this equation gm is the differentiation of this id with respect to vgs which is equal to mu c ox prime w by l times 1 plus lambda vds times if we differentiate this we get 2 here 2 2 gets cancelled we get vgs minus vth so this would be the transconductance of the mosfet and if we get to the drain resistance in fact drain resistance is 1 over del id over del vds so we can write this if we find this value del id over del vds from here when we differentiate this entire term doesn't depend on vds hence this will be constant after differentiation it will come out if you look at this term this one differentiation is zero plus differentiation of this would give us only lambda so in fact this entire term times lambda would be present when we do del id over del vds so which can be written as lambda times id approximately we can write this as 1 over lambda times id if we observe this equation which is drain resistance depends on the channel length modulation parameter lambda if there is no channel length modulation lambda would be zero in that case 1 over 0 would be infinity the drain resistance if we assume channel length modulation is not there would be infinity which means this rd when it is infinity this two points would be open the entire segment is open if you assume channel length modulation there would be rd term present here a parallel resistance when we see this circuit symbol in a circuit if you want to do small signal analysis we have to replace this circuit symbol with this equivalent small signal model now let's see the uh, philosophy behind the small signal model let's start from this equation because it contains both the dc current because of the dc voltage is supplied and small signal current because of the small signal voltage is supplied now if you look at this the assumption with which we started was that let's say there is vgs which is with respect to time vgs is constant capital vgs and we are assuming there is a delta vgs that we are changing on top of it let's say that delta is around this value let's say this is delta vgs we said this change is very small so that we equated this to a small signal vgs so let's say this might be a small sinusoid that is riding on top of this big dc vgs value now in that case when we did the taylor series expansion 
we got that the DC current was equated to a function which is dependent only on the DC values. So the DC was completely not dependent on the small signal values here. But when you see the small signal that resulted because of the changes in the voltages here, that was depending only on the small signal values, small VGS and small VDS. But of course, there were parameters like delta ID over delta VGS and delta ID over delta VDS. These are the two key parameters which we defined them as GM and 1 over RD. If you look at this, GM is a small signal parameter value and RD is a small signal parameter value represented in this small signal model. But if you observe carefully, if you look at the definition, this differentiation was done at a given VDS, which means at a given DC voltage, this partial differentiation was taken, which means the small signal model depends on the DC biasing point. Now let's come to the DC biasing point. So let me take an example circuit here that is let's say RD and we have a MOSFET here. Let's say the voltage that we are applying at the input is a small signal plus there is a VGS that we are applying which is DC. Because of this DC potential supplied across there is a DC current that is flowing capital ID. And because of the small change in this VGS, there would be a small change in ID. That's what we are talking about. Because of which even the VDS that we are saying here would have a small change, VGS. Now we have seen if these changes are small, according to Taylor series expansion, this can be accurately represented with a linear model, which means However, the characteristics of a circuit is, even the circuit is non-linear, if the signal applied is small, at that given point of operation, that is the DC biasing point, we can take the circuit to be linear. For example, let's say the earth is close to a sphere, but still when you stand across and see, you see flat surfaces, which means the region we are seeing is very small compared to the entire sphere, hence it looks flat. So the same way, if you look even the characteristics of MOSFET, that is, I've drawn this graph very roughly, don't take it literally. Let's say a VGS, capital VGS is here. And around this point, of course, this entire curve is nonlinear, but around this, if the delta is very small, let's say, this delta is going to be only within this range. This can be approximated with a line of some certain slope which we have gm the slope so this is what we say around a given dc biasing point within a small signal value the nonlinear characteristics can be taken as linear when they are linear when we observe this the dc biasing is completely independent of this ac model but of course, the AC model is not completely independent of the DC because there are parameters which are derived from the DC biasing point. But this equation tells us that we can do DC biasing separately and get the AC parameter model values and do AC analysis separately so that we are not interdepending on each other. So what does that mean? That is, let's say we have the circuit here. So when we are doing AC analysis, we represented that ID is equal to this value. We didn't even take into consideration the DC parameters. But of course, the GM and RD depend on DC biasing point. That we should never forget. So when we are doing small signal analysis for this circuit, let's say, the DC biasing parameters should not be considered while doing small signal analysis. So we completely neglect this so that we do only the AC parameter analysis. In that case, the first point is all the DC voltage sources, DC voltage sources should be shorted and DC current sources should be opened because we are assuming these voltages are zero. The effect because of this DC biasing should not be considered during AC analysis. Hence, we are taking DC voltages are zero, hence short circuited and DC current sources are 
zero which means open when current source current is zero it is open and then we will do the analysis of small signal so let me represent the equivalent circuit of this one that would be small signal it's coming here this is gate terminal and we have source grounded here source is grounded and we have drain terminal here drain we know the equivalent circuit between gate drain and source that we have seen here so let me put that across that is like this now if you look at this this drain to vdd is rd now this vdd is anyway shorted which means to ground vdd is zero ground for ac analysis then we would get even this rd here and of course this terminal is nothing but the v out so this is the v out for us so this is v out now here this is vgs this is nothing but the source that is applied here now we can find what is the current here this is gm times vgs and we have everything now of course in this video we are not going to find what is amplification and so on this is just to show you that dc biasing and small signal model so when we are doing ac analysis or small signal model the dc dependent terms are made zero because we assume that the circuit is linear around the dc biasing point so that we can actually take the dc biasing separately ac analysis separately and add them because the circuit is linear 